Sup you chuckle fucks, it's your boy Dark Raku here with What If Issei Was a Mysterious Vice Commander. Part 6, yes it's gonna be more shorter than ever because I didn't have time to record. What I did, it's just I got distracted by something else and yeah. Other than that, let me begin this as What If, let me shut the fuck up and let me begin. So we begin into mostly uh, Issei and Izana getting out of the school. While everyone is right now just staying away from like the middle of the hallway, just because Izana has taken out like three bullies. They're literally, he literally just roundhouse kicked them in the head and knocking them out. Literally so many bullies that would have tried to bully is Issei is right now getting taken out so easily by Izana. Izana is not having none of the shit at all. Izana is quite pissed and annoyed if any of them dare to try to touch his little brother. Because Izana is quite overprotective of Issei sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't do that because of the fact that he knows that his brother's uh, older. But mostly he is showing a little bit more kindness because, well, the reason why, he hasn't seen his little brother in two years. And he knows that he he has been with what to call his parents for a while. And he's just wanting to make sure that he didn't become soft or just in general, whatever. But that's where, well, mostly, well, every guy, girl, and like whoever the fuck stands in front of Issei or Zana's way is getting taken out. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, they're getting one shot into hell. This is where, well, mostly no one can actually stop Izana. None of the third years, second years, or first years. They're all getting easily knocked out of, out of the way by Izana. Izana just glares at anyone there and tries to get in their way. But when they walk outside, they meet up with a guy who's actually quite big. Has like this tattoo on the side of his head. His hair is kind of like cut to be only on the top of his head and this is where well he has a malicious grin because he was actually attacking well mostly this guy with pinkish hair this guy with pinkish hair is none other than Raphael and Raphael was trying to protect his sister and his sister's friend Raphael did accidentally pick a fight with this guy not knowing this guy is named Toronto South Toronto or uh, Toronto South but yeah and this is where well Raphael's like damn it wasn't expecting him he's from that gang this is where well Catherine is right now trying to use her kind of kendo sword to try to attack Toronto. Toronto grabs and snaps and is right now with a put out a punch with a call Catherine in the face. Until Raphael managed to kind of block the punch by using his face. And right now pushing, well that punch pushed him into his sister. Right now they both slam to the ground. This is where, well, we'll see uh, Raphael's like, ow, that fucking hurt, like out. This is where, well... Both Raphael and Catherine can barely get up. Any of the other Kendo girls who are actually there, they're not mastery of like Kendo uh, just yet. So of course some of them are actually new to the uh, what's it called like Kendo style and other things. Moriyama and uh, Catherine are the only ones that are actually really good in, in Kendo swords, but they're only vice uh, captains. While the actual captain is actually somewhere else dealing with a test in school, and of course she's just signed. But she hears commotion outside, and this is where the teacher says, so it looks like there's a delinquent fighting against the candle club. That's where, well, the captain itself right now gets up. A girl with longish kind of, well not longish, kind of pinkish hair, and kind of these like, pinkish, or wait. She has kind of like this pinkish whitish hair, and of course with bluish eyes, and she gets up in an instant, grabbing two candle swords, and right now rushing outside. The teacher says, wait, no, miss, uh, she, uh, she's gone. This is where, well, she's rushing outside, but this is where, well, she sees a commotion of a bunch of guys getting knocked out by Zana. Zana is just walking out, and when he walks out, he sees South Toronto. This is where Zana says, oi, 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 what the hell are you doing here, Toronto? Toronto turns around before about attacking Moriyama, and this is where he says, Zana, what are you doing here? Zana right now glares at Toronto, and Toronto smiles and grins at mostly Zana. Issei turns to Mosi managed to get out of the way from Mosi. Izana's kind of blocking his view because Izana's a little bit bigger than him. Mosi Izana's actually 5'10 while Issei's actually only 5'7. Or not 5'7, he's. Yeah, you want. Uh, not 5'10, he's like 5'9 while Issei's like 5'7, but yeah. This is where, well. This is where, well. Izana glares at Toronto. Toronto grins at Mosi Izana. This is where Issei says, wait, what did you call him? This is where Izana says, I call him Toronto. His name is South Toronto. Issa says, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is where he thinks in his head. He remembers that Jin died towards someone named Toronto South. And this is where Issa says, are you saying 
that he's the motherfucker that was about to ruin my life. This is where, well, Issei grit his teeth. And this is where, well, mostly Izana noticed that Issei looks pissed more than ever. His eyes became a darker, dullish purple. A menacing purple. This is where Issei gets out there and looks at Mosi with a car. Well, Toronto, Toronto, say, huh? Who are you? This is where before Mosi, uh, was a car, Toronto can even do anything. Moriyama tries to attack with a car, Toronto, but Toronto turns around about a punch her in the face until this is where he gets hit in the side of the neck, being pushed out of the way. This is where, well, he turns around and sees it was actually Issei that kicked him. This is where, well, he's on a size and decides to just watch this battle. If anything happens, he will jump in. But this is where, well, mostly Toronto grins and says, Oh, you're going to fight me. He tries to punch at Issa, but Issa right now dodge and kick him in the, in the, like, in the neck of his, like, what's it called, throw. <laughs> this is where Toronto gets pushed away. He's like, what the? He then looks up and then seeing a kick right now smash into his face in an engine. Issa's fighting style is more like a dance moment. It kind of looks more like a dance, and Izana knows that kind of does look like, uh, like a dance most of the time. This is where oh, Toronto gets up and right now kind of holds his neck and looks at Mosi. Isu where a murderous look, but this is where, well, he had to dodge another kick. This kick was aimed to his side of the head. Uh, Toronto tries to duck, but this is where he gets hit anyway. <laughs> and this is where, well, he can just push back and say, Ugh, You little... This is where well, Mashi managed to kind of get past Mosi Izana, trying to push him out of the way, which Izana gets annoyed and says, Hey, you bitch, what the hell is wrong with you? This is where um, uh, Musashi kind of glares at Mosi Izana, and both of them just glare at each other. This is where, well, mostly other people, like other females, like what's it called, other Citrina actually comes outside and sees Toronto. Toronto is fighting against uh, Issei. Issei is easily kicking the shit out of uh, what's it called, Toronto. Toronto tries to grab Issei's leg, but this is where Issei uses the other leg to smash it into mostly Toronto. Toronto gets pushed up and says, like, what the hell? This is where he's bleeding from his nose. Damn it. I wasn't expecting this. This is where, well... Mostly so much blood is kind of seeping from his nose and kind of falling down to the ground. <laughs> this is where, well, he noticed that T is actually getting hurt really bad. Issei is not joking around. He's actually planning to kill mostly Toronto. Toronto starts just sending, well, just kind of uses the leg that mostly he had of Issei and swings him away. Issei lands on the ground with his, like, hands. Landing on the ground first, push himself up and then jumping up in the air. Kind of sliding down the ground pretty easily. This is where, well, Toronto grit his teeth and glares at, well, mostly Issei. You are not getting away from me, brat! He goes into dark impulse in an end scene, and right now sending multiple punches at what's it called Issei. Issei right now catches them with his own hands. He literally grabs the punches and just pushing them away. He was just grabbing and pushing them away. Toronto notices, and this is where he goes into dark impulse entirely. Right now, sends a very powerful punch that should end, end what to call Issei's life. But this is where, when they hit Issei in the stomach, because he managed to kind of hit Issei in the stomach with that punch, he pushed Issei away, but this is where, well, Issei managed to kind of get... Issei was just getting up, well, he gets up, and this is where, well, mostly he was already in dark impulse, but this is where, well, something even much more darker and sinister appears around him. This is where, well, Issei right now goes into his chanting name. I, who is about to awaken? Well, not about to awaken. He says, I, who am about to awaken, am the dragon who took the principles of domination. Well, mostly, not domination. Let me say that again. <clears throat> Wait, yeah. You know what? No, no, no. So, I, who am about to awaken, am the dragon who took both the principle of domination and supremacy, and I shall drown you. And well, yeah, and both the principles of domination and supremacy, I shall bring you to nothing but the pure abyss of the uh, darkness. I shall drown you with the shadows of those who have fallen. I should. This is where, well, mostly when he keeps chanting this, like whatever title name. I know it doesn't make any sense, but well, fuck off. Uh, this is where, well, Mosi, his darkness aura started kind of erupting around him. This darkness aura is different. It's like dark impulse, but it's becoming much more stronger, and his eyes are becoming much more scarier and purple. This is where, well, Mosi is on a notices, and all he can do is just watch Toronto get murdered later. 
This is where, well, Issei walks up forward towards Toronto, and this is where, well, he says, I should drown you into nothing but the emptiness of complete void. This is where, well, Toronto did not care in what he said, and this is where Issei punched him in the face so hard, knocking him out almost out of dark impulse. This is where, well, Toronto was just shocked. One punch to the face almost knocked him out entirely. This is where, well, that punch was barely even seen by Toronto's eyes or views or whatever. This is where, well, we'll see Toronto right now glares at Issei and tried to punch at him, but that punch was catched by Issei, and this is where Issei starts kind of crushing Toronto's hand. Toronto screams in an instant, right now nothing but terror and pain. He sees Issei's eyes, and they're right now lifeless. This is where Issei grabs Toronto down towards his eye level before punching him so hard in the face, right now making his, like, blacking one of his eyes out. This is where Toronto right now grabs his eye and looks at mostly east where murders look but this is where well a kick was sent so powerful strolling down through the side of his stomach hitting him right in somewhere like in his limb shot or whatever in his like side of his stomach hitting him so hard that toronto cough up blood this is where toronto looks back up and then sees a knee flying towards him in an instant sending such a powerful knee into its face right now smashing him down to the ground this is where Toronto, all he can understand is this is the worst beating that he has been getting, well, he has taken in a while. The worst one that he has taken was Mikey when he used his Dark Impulse and it was much stronger than his. But this is where Issei's Dark Impulse is much more scarier. This is not Dark Impulse, this is the Abyss Impulse. This is the true form and the true version of Dark Impulse. His power, his anger, his rage, the destruction between all that power is just right now the fact that he's in this impulse state. Every time he chants this, like, mostly chant, there's, like, multiple different chants, but this one is called the, uh, well, it's kind of like a half version of the, imp uh, well, Abyss Impulse that allows him to kind of go into a berserking state, a semi berserking state. The true one will actually make him go into a berserking state, but he will actually be in control. This is where, well, mostly Issei grabs Toronto to the ground and starts punching him over and over and over. Think of it like Kazator getting his fucking face punched over and over by Mikey when Mikey was in Dark Impulse. This is where, well, Issei was not giving up until he murdered. He caught a body at his first day of being free. This is where, well, all that Toronto felt was nothing but bruises, pain, and hurt, loneliness, he was feeling the actual emo uh, emotions from Issei, the true epitome, well, the uh, the epitome of the true emotions of what Abyss is truly like: the loneliness, the hatred, the despair, destruction, and everything. He's just feeling all of it at once. Every punch of those punches are the heavy emotions that Issei has felt for the longest point. For two years, he has felt that. No. No one could ever help him with those emotions unless it was actually his friends or his like leader. Those emotions, those emotions were also those emotions from a long time ago. Because a long time ago, him and Izana was actually abandoned from his parents at a young age. And because most of his parents were kind of not wanting to take care of children like what's it called Izana or what's it called him. So, of course, when Issei was abandoned at such a young age, Izana was the only one to take care of him. Of course, Shinjiro and then Mikey and Enma were there, but this where uh, Izana did not want to trust Shinjiro too much because Shinjiro talked about Mikey way too much. Of course, Izana took mostly Issei away, but yeah. But of course, when Issei heard about what's he called mostly uh, Shinjiro's death, he, it broke him entirely. It hurt his mostly body a lot. His heart was almost shattered. And luckily, if Izana wasn't there, he would have been quite sad and depressed. In a very dark, malicious form, would it actually appear? That's why, in, well, mostly the Abyss Impulse was actually created. It's actually the true motions and destruction and other things. This is where, well, mostly, what's it called? Issei keeps punching the shit out of what's it called, mostly, Toronto. But this is where Issei was actually stopped by a hand. None other by Moriyama. Moriyama says, please, stop it. Please, you don't need to do this to him. This is where she was crying and hoping that sh her light can actually reach him. But entirely, it can't really uh, reach him. But this is where Isana says, hey, Issei, Kun. This is where, well, mostly baby brother Kun. This is where Issei turned, looked up to see Izana. Izana was the only one that actually managed to get him out of that mostly angry state. This is where, well, uh, Izana says, look what you're doing right now to him. 
AJ looks back at what he was doing and he sees Toronto's face. All fucked up. That man's face was so fucked up that there's no way even the fucking nurse, doctor, or whoever is going to take a picture of his face because there's no way to actually recognize it. Yeah, Toronto's face was all fucked up. Issa gets up and realizes what he did to Toronto. Was quite fucked up, but then again, he didn't care. This is where, well, uh, mostly Satrina and like the other were horrified. Uh, Muramashi, she was horrified to see Issa just beat the shit and that's all bloody right now. Not from his blood, it was actually from Toronto's. But this is where he just didn't care and got rid of the blood from his face. This is where multiple Toronto members, uh, well, yeah, mostly Toronto's kind of big, uh, biker gang members appear. And they want to fight against mostly Issei because of what they did for, well, not really what they did. When they saw this, they saw Toronto on the ground, Issei and Izana right next to each other. And they thought they saw two, <laughs> two Izanas. The, yeah, mostly they're, they're fair in Izana. But when they saw two different Izanas, they were like, no, no, no. They, they ran like bitches. Yeah, they ran like hell. Issei's mental state was not in the right places, mine, right now. Izana just kind of grabbed his hand right now, pull him out of there. This is where, well, Izana kind of told him to get on the bike and they will leave, well, get to the house. But for right now, I'm going to leave it off here for part six of this what if. I know all of these what ifs are short and I don't care. Leave me alone and don't have time. Other than that, bye. So, yeah. When I say I don't have time, I usually am too lazy to record. But, yeah, other than that, bye, Theo.